I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 5th of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to talk about how you go about or what you should consider when you're looking at homes and moving to Nicaragua before you actually come. We're going to get to that right after our bump. This wasn't my planned topic for the day, but this came up and it comes up a lot and I thought it would be good to actually cover this in its own video. I need something to link to, of course, so if you're seeing this after the 12th of July in 2023, then I've probably sent you this link and said, hey, you should check this out. So welcome to the show. Be sure to uh, like and subscribe and do all that stuff. We have a lot of cool information about Nicaragua and then just traveling and relocating in general here. And sometimes it's just a fun vlog to hang out and have your coffee with in the morning. So. When I'm talking, especially to Americans and Canadians, and, and trust me, this happened to me too, happened to almost everyone I know, so this is like a universal thing, but I can't quite put my finger on why it happens or why it exists. When people are considering relocating, um, and, and I've lived all over the world, I've moved to Spain and Italy, Greece, Romania, Ukraine, Panama, Nicaragua, more than once, I've moved to and from the US, I've done a lot of moving throughout my life, and sometimes I'm buying houses, sometimes I'm just renting, and of course, when you're looking to move somewhere and you're going temporarily and you know it's going to be temporary, it's normal to rent ahead of time and have a place ready and do all of your searching and preparation from abroad because you want to be able to get there and move directly into your house. If you're only going to live somewhere for, say, a month or maybe two months, spending a week or two trying to track a place down and then maybe having to wait a while before you can move in, oh, the nightmare. You spend all your time doing that. What was the point of renting the place? In the first place, there isn't. So that makes a lot of sense. But when you're looking at actually moving to a place, relocating, possibly retiring, packing up your family and going, whatever, and it's gonna be for some amount of permanence, we generally think, if you're thinking of, let's say, Spain, or if you're going to move to China, and I want you to visualize this, do this as an exercise with me. Imagine you're going to move to Australia, or China, or Spain, or you name it, Lebanon, someplace you've never been. Picture where do you want to buy a house? Where do you want to live? What do you want your living to be like? Chances are, like most of us, you would suddenly say, well, I don't know anything about that place. If I was moving to China, if I was moving to China, I would have very little idea. When I think of China, I do not think of beaches, but it has a lot of them. And it does have a lot of rivers and it has some big cities, but it also has a lot of farmland. I have no idea. If I had to move to China tomorrow, I don't have the first inkling of even what province I would want to live in, let alone which city and within the cities, what neighborhoods or areas or, or are there beaches I would like and what's the weather really like? I have a fair idea of the weather in China, not a great idea, right? There's so many things that I don't know because I haven't been there. What is it like when the Gobi Desert has dust storms? Is there a lot of rain in different regions? And which ones are on the train lines that I like? Where are the airports I'm gonna wanna use? Like there's so much, it's overwhelming. And of course you can think about what it would be like coming to the United States in reverse. What if you'd, or assuming that you're coming to the United States or if you're from uh, Canada, wherever, your home country. Imagine if you were going to move to your home country but had never been there. Chances are there's so many unknowns. If you were going to tell me about your country and tell me where's good to live for me, I bet you would struggle. You'd have some ideas. Oh, this city's cool. That's it. I'll be like, okay, what neighborhood? How do I look and find a house there? You'd be like, oh, you, I mean, you got to go check it out, right? And that's kind of the fundamentals. I moved the camera slightly because the camera itself was getting too much sunlight and it was going to overheat very, very quickly. So fundamentally, when you're moving to a new place, any new place anywhere that you have not spent time in before, you need to go there and learn a lot of things about it. One, you need to learn if that's even a place that you want to be. You can hypothesize pretty well about a lot of places. It's easy to look at videos about Italy and know that Maybe you can't be sure it'd be your favorite place, but it's really easy to determine that it's one that you would like. So, okay, I still would recommend going, but you can make some countrywide decisions fairly accurately before actually going. And Nicaragua is an awfully good choice. It's safe, it's affordable, it's within a certain range of airports and all kinds of things. So you can start to say, maybe this is something I can choose before I actually go. Granted, okay. 
it is a uniquely, it seems, American or Canadian thing to think that we want to uh, start looking at properties before we've been to Nicaragua. I don't know what it is about a combination of factors, but it is unique. I've never seen this happen in another country, and I've never heard, seen it happen from another country. People who are coming from Europe to Nicaragua do not start thinking about buying before they get here. That's not a thing that happens. It's only people coming from the US and Canada. I don't know what makes that happen, but it's a really weird reaction, and it's a very dangerous one. And many, many businesses and salespeople in Nicaragua are working very hard to prey on that mentality. And it's not a mild one, it is a very strong one. Nearly everyone I speak to, when they are thinking about moving to Nicaragua, they, we start with conversations like, oh, that sounds like a nice country. It seems like that would be a place I'd like to consider. I would really like to check it out. And instead of looking at, is this a place I'd want to live in, or maybe in addition to, and instead of really digging into what cities or regions look really interesting, the reaction is to immediately start looking at properties, at houses or building lots that are being advertised online and starting from a property search and then working backwards towards everything else. Imagine doing that going into the United States. I'm moving to, I realize that's an extreme example because of how big it is, but it's, it, it serves its purpose. I'm thinking about moving to the United States. I don't need a job there, so I'm fairly free to live where I want to live. I'm going to, instead of looking at cities, instead of really getting to know the country, instead of doing a lot of research on the country, I'm going to go on to real estate websites and start just seeing what houses are available at what prices and go from there. Of course, you would find things and you'd find legitimate things and you could purchase them remotely in theory. The problem is, is that when you then came to the United States, you would discover what the city or town or neighborhood is actually like. You may find you made a great decision, but very likely you're going to find you made one that may not align with your needs. I'm not saying you'd end up with a terrible place. You may end up with something perfectly nice, but you may end up in Pittsburgh and realize that the winters are much colder than you realized. Or maybe you don't like having the traffic in the way that Pittsburgh does with all the mountains and the bridges, and it's just a bit much for you. Or it lacks the amount of public transportation you're picturing in a place like New York City. Maybe you'd end up with a house in rural Iowa and not realize that you weren't just outside of a big city. You thought all of the United States was a giant city. Or as many people would do, you'd end up with a farmhouse in New York, hours and hours away from any large city, thinking that all of New York was one giant city. Many people, even in America, believe that to be true. So coming from another country, it's even more of a problem. What I find is that people looking remotely at Nicaragua routinely have a few things happen. One is that they look at what, so we've talked about this before, right? There is no such thing as legitimate online listings of houses and stuff. I'm not saying that no individual listing ever has not been legitimate. I'm saying that there's no service that provides this in a legitimate way. Locals do not put houses online. That is not how real estate is done here and agencies have no reason to put real ones online. If you're looking online, you're getting prices. First of all, anything that's online, as legit as it might be, those prices are specifically for people looking online, which means not Nicaraguans. So if you've ever heard of gringo pricing, if you look online, you are guaranteeing, you are advertising that you are a gringo and that you are looking for gringo prices, right? So it would be crazy for someone to, who did have a house to sell, to not gringo price you. It would be absolutely insane for them not to do so because you're advertising that you're open to it and that that's who you are. Because anyone who knows the market, anyone who's listening to my videos, anyone who has been here and put some time into it knows you have to be on the ground looking in person to get the local prices. That's not that you can't find any good thing ever online and not have it work out, but guaranteed the prices you're going to see, the information you're going to get is all being modified. It is all specifically targeted at you as a foreigner. It is not that you are looking. So if you're coming to the United States, this is really important, this concept right now. If you're going to the United States or Canada and you look online at the web, Century 21, you go online, you look at their website, those listings are for other Americans or other Canadians to look at their own listings in their own neighborhoods or neighborhoods they know and are interested in moving to. And those are the prices that are listed. Of course, they're asking prices, you still negotiate, but you're getting the price targeted 
for that market, the information you get from that website is generally useful. If you were to discover that that house that was listed there was not legitimate, you would have legal recourse to contact someone and say, this is a false listing, something needs to be done about it, and someone would do something about it. The person who owns the house would have legal recourse to do something about it and reason to do so. There's a lot of legalities that go on, and the information that you would get would be relatively accurate because you're the target audience. In Nicaragua, it is not like that. Those listings are often not even known by the owners. The houses that are shown may or may not even exist in some cases. Often the information is inflated prices. They may not be actively for sale, all kinds of things. And they, even if they are, they are probably not represented by the person who has the website. It's just someone posting pictures of a house and the number that they show may be a Hail Mary and maybe gringo price and it may be completely fabricated because it's not by someone who's ever talked to someone who's actually selling it all kinds of information. So when you're looking at those websites in the US or Canada, you get used to that you just go on a website and get this information about houses. If you then take that information and try to apply it to Nicaragua, you're going to be misled because that information is not like that. None of those websites are for Nicaraguans. They're still just for Americans who are thinking like North Americans. Well, in North America, this is what I would do. So when I come to Nicaragua, I'm not going to change my behavior. I'm going to keep doing what I would do in North America and expect good results. And it's not that that's guaranteed to be bad, but that as an overall process is a very dangerous one. You, when you're moving to any new country, imagine moving from Africa to the United States and being like, I'm not gonna do things like Americans do. I'm not gonna own a car. I'm not gonna go get a job. I'm going to just squat in some field and meaning like stay and live in a field and I'm gonna start farming on my own and uh, no one's gonna take it away from me because it's an empty field that no one's using and I'm not gonna get a job and pay money or taxes. Um, I guarantee the person who owns that field is gonna show up and be like, you can't squat here. This is my field. I'm going to run a tractor over you. And then when they kick you off, they're going to call the police. The police are going to show up. And they're going to find out you haven't been paying your taxes and it's going to be off to jail. And that's assuming you don't have any immigration problems. Like you can't just do that. You need to understand how taxes work, how real estate works, how house ownership works, how property ownership works. It's different. I'm not saying that Nicaragua is wildly different than the United States. But there are these nuances where you can't just take the way that we do it in the United States or the way that you do it in, in rural Botswana and say, I'm just going to do that in some other market. You have to take the time, learn that market, learn how it works and work within their processes or very likely you're going to be very sorry. In some cases, like the person who comes from a rural African zone and doesn't realize that an empty field is not something you can just lay claim to. A North American who is coming to Nicaragua is not going to run into legal problems by trying to buy a house online. They're going to run into financial ones because everybody who is involved in that process is going to be aware that this is someone who is not paying attention, not doing their research, not listening to the, the advice, not thinking critically about the processes. It would be crazy for them not to take advantage of the situation because it is so completely open to be taken advantage of. So what is the answer? The answer is not that hard. The answer is buying a house remotely, even researching casually remotely is a really bad idea. And it serves no purpose. There's no reason to need to do that. It, there is, let me, let me back up. There is a slight value. There are some, uh, for example, YouTube channels that show houses and farms and the, you know, they're, they're from real estate agents. For the most part, the houses that they're showing or actual real Nicaraguan houses, right? I'm not saying that they're not. And watching those shows could be valuable from a, now I get to see pictures of what does this house look like? What does that house look like? What does this landscape look like? What is, so I'm not saying that that's us bad. You can learn a little bit about what's out there from those shows, but be careful because you're only finding out what is being filtered for gringos. And the same is true with my show. So I'm not, not excusing myself from this. I'm not showing you every single random house. I'm finding ones where people are willing to let us film where we think it's going to be interesting for you. So you're getting something filtered. When I walk through the streets, you're getting unfiltered, right? I'm just walking. That's very telling for the most part. But other stuff where we're going into houses, you're watching shows about houses, you have to be careful because you're getting just selected slices of Nicaraguan life and you may not realize what the house next door is like, what the options down the street is like, what the options in the next city is like. There's a lot you're going to be missing, but what you have to be really careful of is the commentary. 
So in many cases, shut off the audio, make sure there's no nothing going on, because when you're you, when you're watching those shows, often you'll hear prices, you'll hear information. Oh, this is a great value. This is a great location. This is a and that stuff may not be true. And you want to be really really wary of someone who makes their money selling you not just selling you something, but selling you specifically the things they represent at the highest cost possible. The information that they're going to give you is very suspect because they're not representing you. They are, they are a salesperson, right? They are against you in that process. Not that they're out to hurt you, but their interests do not align with yours. They make their money by you losing money. So you need to be careful because every piece of what you're getting from them may be orchestrated to lead you astray. So just be aware of that. That is general sales practice, right? When you're dealing with salespeople, be aware that their interest is to sell you things and in your interest is to only buy things that make sense for you and their interest is to get the highest price possible. Yours is to get the lowest possible. They are not your ally when it comes to selecting or pricing anything. All right, so that's, that's the first piece. So the need though to look at houses from remote really doesn't exist. Does Nicaragua have nice houses? Yes. Does Nicaragua have crappy houses? Yes. Does it have expensive houses? Yes. Does it have cheap ones? Yes. That's what you need to know. Every bit of the country has houses in it. The places that you go that don't have houses have lots and you could build a house, right? You have options to put in houses. The things that you need to be really looking at and the things that you need to be wondering about from remote is getting a feel for what the country is like. What does the cities look like? The countries look like the suburbs? What are restaurants? Like put the pieces together to start assembling an idea of what life looks like and what life will cost. That general picture will help you select regions in the country and have an idea of where to start investigating. But you need to really start after you, once you get to that point where you're like, Nicaragua is high on my radar. It's a serious consideration. It's my top pick. You need to get on a plane and you need to come here. That's super important. I can't stress that enough. You need to make your big, big choices. City, country, suburbs, Managua, Leon, Granada, San Juan del Sur, uh, Matagalpa. You need to make those choices first. Don't start by looking at property. Figure out where you want to live. What has the climate you want, the cost you want, the travel options you want, the restaurants you want, the lifestyle you want. You have to do those things first. And this is for everyone. I don't know anybody who leads with property, but for some reason coming to Nicaragua, everyone thinks they need to. You absolutely do not. You absolutely should not. You almost cannot. Almost all the good options are essentially out of your reach until you come here. I'm not saying you can't hire someone on the ground to go do a bunch of work for you and find a way. Yes, it's possible. Is it wise? Probably not. As someone who provides those kinds of services, I would only do so after advising you, don't do this. Come and have us give you a tour around the country. Absolutely. Watch my show and see pictures from different parts of the country. Absolutely. Watch other people's show and see things from around the country. Look at Google Maps. Do all that research? Yes, we would love to help with all kinds of stuff because you know I would love to give tours to people. You want to travel around and see different cities? I would love to do that. You could hire us to go through an entire process of selecting and buying you a house remotely. But I'm telling you that while we could make money doing that and happily will if you push the point, it is not a smart way to go. You need to be here and get a feel for neighborhoods, get a feel for the beach. I moved myself to the beach and after a year on the beach said, I do love this beach, but I don't like living on the beach. I want to be closer to the city. And I moved and I live here in the suburbs right on the edge of the city. And that has proved to be perfect, but it took time. And I lived in Nicaragua previously and I visited in between. I put a lot of time and effort and I had reasons to buy on the beach and I was very uh, impulsive in doing so, but it worked out very well. But we, we do, took calculated risks in doing that. And we had a very good idea of what it was with lots and lots of research. It is not wise to come blind into any market anywhere and start looking at houses. And things that I've noticed is that when people look remotely, it is extremely easy, um, and this is once you've been here and you really get to know the market, you put in some time, then you can start looking remotely in theory. Still very dangerous, not going to be very effective, but at least it's plausible. And the thing that I've noticed from people who've never been here and start looking is one, they start looking wildly all over the country and not realizing that they're doing so. Many of the searches, and this San Juan del Sur tends to be very guilty of this, 
and some of it's for legitimate reasons, so I don't, I don't mean to accuse them. It's a small village that we generally consider to be sprawling over a region. So a lot of times people are looking and they'll do a search for San Juan del Sur and they'll get things that are 20, 30 even, and minutes, even an hour outside of the village. That's really far in a small country and will be completely different. When we talk about San Juan del Sur, we're like, oh, it's got all these restaurants, it's got all these activities, it's the hub of activity in the region, it's got these resources. And then people go to buy a house there. The majority of houses that people are looking at are not in the village. They're pretty far out. And you don't get any of those amenities that we're talking about. You may get others because you're in a different spot, but they're not really what we would consider San Juan del Sur. You get a wildly different experience. That's important that when you look and do a search, chances are the majority or a very large percentage of the houses you're going to see listed as San Juan del Sur aren't in San Juan del Sur. And in some cases are not even in the region because it just does a beach search. In some cases it doesn't even do that. So that kind of stuff, you gotta be really careful. You may end up with information all over. You also end up with uh, a lot of houses that are designed to draw you in, get your attention, and then they're gonna try to sell you something that they actually have once they've got you really reeled in. And this is a normal emotional ploy used by salespeople. It's bait and switch on a grand scale. Oh, you really like this house? Ah, oh, it sold before we got to you. Didn't matter that it was a made up house or it wasn't really on the market. No one will ever be able to prove that later. No one ever researches those things later. Okay, some of us do, some of us know what's going on. But in general, no one does, no one follows up with that. So it's a really useful tactic. Oh, the, the seller didn't want to sell. He decided, you know, it was, it was not in his interest. He wanted to hold on to it. That's how good the market is, right? They'll tell you that the market is good when in fact it's really bad. They will tell you that a price looks really good. And they know that when you're looking remotely, your context of what something should cost is way off. Someone can show you a house and be like, look, this is only $150,000. And you say, wow, only $150,000? That's, I can't believe a house could be that cheap. And then you get here and realize that on the local market, people would have only paid 80, 85 for it. And you paid almost double thinking you were getting a good deal. And you hear this from people all the time. Well, I did it and I got a good deal on my house. But then when they say how much they spent on their house, it's like, I don't know anyone who would have spent that, all right? Um, and not everybody has gotten ripped off, but the, you know, the, the options to do so, the ability to be ripped off when you're doing it remotely like that is very, very high. And so the thing that I'm trying to explain, and I think I'm getting my point across, but I say this so often and every person who talks to me still does the same things. Well, but I want to work like an American. I think I'm the exception. I think I found everyone. I found a website or I found a salesperson who I think must be the exception to this rule. And I will say this again, I've said it before, every time someone says they think they found the exception, they mention the person we were specifically thinking of when giving the example. Every time. I have never once had someone come up with even just a random person who met the, the, the context. It's always specifically, they will give me a list of names and say, not these people, not this company, it's always those. And the more you think you found an exception, the more you think you're the exception, the less likely either is to be true. If you were truly to find an exception, you would think you hadn't. So when you're like, but not this guy, yeah, definitely that guy. But not this company, yeah, definitely that company. That is how it works, every time. <laughs> and the more I say it, the more everyone just ignores it. Well, I know you said this, but they must be the exception. No, um, but this website, no, if there was a website that had real information on it, trust me, we'd all be using it. We would all be talking about it. We are all wishing that those kinds of sites existed. And we actually had someone who's a member of this community here uh, for a while, early on viewer, uh, who went and tried to build a tool like that, but got a lot of pushback and didn't have the technical teams to do so. So like there's reasons why it didn't take off, but that desire to have information systems to make it possible to actually do some of that research has been approached and desired, but at the end of the day, nothing exists currently. I'm not saying nothing could ever exist, but as it currently stands, there is nothing that you want to be trying to rely on remotely. And so what is the answer to all of this? We know there's a lot of Scott says, don't do these things, but what's lacking is Scott saying what to do. I hear you, trust me. And I wish that the answers were simpler, but the, the biggest answer is patience. And this is important. So take a moment, have patience, and let me explain. The thing that's happening is that people get excited about the potential of moving to paradise, and I get it. I can't wait to move to paradise. When I wasn't living here, I felt the need to come. And when we were going to move, my wife's top thing was she needed a place that we owned to be moving to. Now, we had lived here previously. We had already come down and rented. I had already come down again and did some scouting. We came down again and did some scouting. 
So the desire to own was based on a bit of knowledge here. We had already lived in the country and visited a very large amount of it before we looked to buy, but she wasn't willing to make the permanent move until we owned a place. And that was a difficult emotional thing that we had to get past and we could only get past by buying something, which we did, and that was very risky and had some ramifications, but that is, that is what pushed us to do it. If, and, and patience is definitely something that she struggles with. If patience is the problem, think about that there's no penalty to being patient. It's going to give you a house that is more the house of your dreams, and it's going to give it to you at a lower cost, and it'll be with less stress and less risk. Of course, you need to come down and spend some time, rent something, rent something for a while. People, I've met people, I talked about this a long time ago, I met some people in San Juan del Sur who had lived there for one or two years and what they were doing is renting for six months in different areas around the city so they could get to know what the breeze was like, what it was like in the rainy season, what the sunsets looked like, what the neighborhood was like, what the drive into downtown, how food delivery was. They wanted to really know before they invested. They were about, about to buy a really big house. Right? And they didn't want to do that until they really knew that the area was right. Sure, they like Nicaragua. Sure, they like San Juan del Sur. But it's not that simple. Which hill? Which development? Which view? Which side? Which size building? Like, there's so many things. And it's more than just discovering what you like in Nicaragua or which hill in San Juan del Sur. It's also about discovering something about yourself. And maybe this won't apply to you, but I bet it will. For most of you, coming to Nicaragua will in the, or moving anywhere, is going to involve a bit of self-discovery. You are going to learn things about yourself, partially just about you, but also partially about how you interact with Nicaragua. I'll use our own example. We moved to the beach. That's where we bought. And after a year on the beach, we said, you know what? We like going out to the greater variety of restaurants, to the greater variety of live music, to the dance clubs, to the things in Leon. And we had a lot of things that just required us to be in Leon. Oh, we have to use the ATM a lot and there's none at the beach. Well, that's a big factor that you would not think of unless you live there. Of course, in this case, it's something I was able to think of to tell you, but in general, it's not. And you may think that the grocery store being 20 minutes away is not a big deal, but having it two minutes away might be really nice. And when you add up those factors, you may decide, like us, that you want to live in the city rather than on the beach, even though you want to be close to the beach. Great, those are things you need to discover about yourself. And there's so many things like this. How will you interact with Nicaragua? When I first came here, I would not have guessed that it would cause me to wake up earlier in the morning or that I would like going for walks around the city. So, okay, I probably would have guessed that. But there's lots of different things where I go out to eat. And at the time that we moved, we were not aware of Ugo or Pedido's job. But now those are big things and we use them all the time. Now that's a factor. Now living on the beach, we can't order in food. No one does delivery that we know of and probably we would know if someone did. So that's huge. We love being able to order from a number of places and we do it all the time. We also figured out that we like having a live-in chef. That's not something we would ever have guessed. If you'd have asked us that when we lived in Texas, we'd have been like, um, that's a pipe dream, cool, but no way. And now that we're here, we're like, this is a really obvious thing that you need to have. Uh, if you're able to do it, definitely do it, right? So these things are big things you will learn about yourself. I found that when I lived in Texas, I watched television a lot. Now that we live here, I watch it almost none. So the number of streaming services I need, many fewer. The number of televisions I need around the house, many fewer. We don't play as many video games. We still play a lot of video games, but not as many as we did. We're much more likely to sit outside and enjoy the weather. We did that in Texas, but we do it more here. We're more likely to go out to eat, a lot more likely here, right? Little things will change, not just uh, the things that you anticipate, it's the tiny tweaks because the weather's just a little different. The food is just a little different. The delivery is just a little cheaper. And those little things may change how you view your day, what you want to do. And some of it is what going out to restaurants is like. And it's very hard to describe how those things are different. But for us, going out to restaurants, running into friends, having lots of people show up, hanging out, seeing bands that we know, and like having a big social thing is huge for us. In Texas, we never had that. In New York, we never had that. But for some of you, maybe you have that back home and you'll replicate it here. Maybe for some of you, you have it home and you won't replicate it here and you'll be much more homebodies. How you interact with a new place that you move to is something you need to discover. And you're not going to get your best value 
if you buy based on your projected needs and then move here and then learn those things about yourself, you're gonna say, oh, now I have a house that's too big, too small, too urban, too country, too beach, too mountains, whatever. There's so many little factors. I highly encourage you to come as quickly as possible. The, the two majorly different things is I find that most people hold off actually physically coming to Nicaragua way too long and prioritize buying a place and making really big, nearly immutable uh, decisions way too early. Flip those. Come to Nicaragua much sooner, more often. Prioritize getting here, but deprioritize making big investments. Deprioritizing becoming mired and immutable. Give yourself the flexibility to say like we did. Oh, Granada, we had a beautiful house, but it was the wrong city for us. We had no idea it would be the wrong city. We only rented. We weren't taking a big risk, so that was fine. But had we bought there, we'd have been so sorry. We want to be in Leon given that time to explore the country, figure out the different cities, learn those nuances of culture, cuisine, weather, whatever, that make big differences or little differences for you is important. So get here as soon as you can and take it easy. Don't worry about buying a house. You don't need to make those decisions right away. We have an emotional desire as humans to nest and different people have different amounts of this, but that desire can be very detrimental when you're in a position of life flux. The problem is when you're making big decisions like moving to another country, we have a tendency to feel many parts of our life being in motion and try to create stationary points in which we can pivot against. And one of those things is when you're moving countries, it becomes, well, I'm really nervous about moving countries. I'm very up in the air about how things are gonna work, but if I just had a home that I could call my house and it's mine and I know it, that'll make me feel better. That's an emotional thing and I get it. We all get that feeling, trust me. But it is the worst possible reaction to have at a time that you're moving. At a time that you have many, many unknowns, the wisest thing to do is to allow all those parts of your life to be flexible, to adjust when you discover new things, learn new things, encounter new things, you are able to adapt very quickly, very easily, and at low cost. Low cost could be money, low cost could be effort. And and adjust once you're here once you've made those decisions absolutely buy a house commit become immutable find the place that you want to call your forever home and maybe it'll only take you a few months maybe it'll take you a few years maybe you'll discover you love being able to move around and owning a place doesn't matter at all it depends on you it depends on how you live your lifestyle it depends on what you discover in nicaragua and if you buy you're so much more likely to panic because you are then locked into every problem that you discover in Nicaragua will be, I'm stuck in Nicaragua, I'm trapped with these decisions. But if you're renting and you run into those same problems in Nicaragua, you're like, okay, Nicaragua has some things that are hard to deal with compared to what I'm used to, but you know what? I, if they were so bad, I would just leave. They're not that bad, I'm gonna work around it. It gives you the, the flexibility to relax, right? You're not, you're not panicked because you didn't figure something out about land ownership or you didn't get your deeds filed right or you're not paying your taxes right and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't learn these things and I don't know what to do and I'm trapped. This is where I've invested. I'm, I'm all in. That's great, but you don't want to be all in when you're not mentally all in. Knowing that we're able to pack up and move to another country gives us a lot of comfort to be able to stay in this one and it just makes us feel better and it gives us options. And maybe you'll want to enact those options, but I bet you won't. Most of you who are looking at Nicaragua are gonna say, you know what, this is fantastic. The weather is great. It is so beautiful as I'm recording this. It's like the absolute perfect weather. Um, and it's a beautiful sunset, and just a gorgeous day in general. And yesterday we had the most fantastic sunset. I can't even begin to tell you. Burning sunset searing through the darkest bluish clouds, like so like stormy with just searing orange and red sun. It's fantastic. You don't get that very many places. And just reminders of how much we love it here and how much you'll probably love it here, but you'll love it more if you're not tied to giant decisions that you may panic about, if you're not making huge life decisions that you can't easily reverse at a time when you're not prepared to make them. Give yourself that comfort, give yourself that time. Take some patience, plan on, we're gonna rent. We're gonna stay in hotels or Airbnbs for long enough to find a place we'd like to rent. Certainly you wanna rent someplace that is more likely to reflect what you think you're gonna to wanna to buy so you can explore that more. 
but leave it open to potentially finding something slightly different or wildly different. You may discover that the west coast of Nicaragua isn't for you, but the Caribbean coast is. It doesn't happen to many, but it certainly can happen. You may find like us that you thought the beach was your thing, the city's your thing. Give yourself the flexibility to discover the new you as you discover your new place for you. I think you'll be happier and you will get better results. Don't be impatient. Don't jump the gun. Don't start looking at, and, and I get it, we're, we're conditioned by House Hunters International, right? Trust me, I love House Hunters International. Wow, look at these cool places to live in these cool locations. I want to I wanna go buy that house, right? Remember, that show's fake. Those houses aren't for sale. I've known people whose houses have been on that, on that show. They're not even for sale. It's just filming someone's house and then they film people's reactions to it. The whole thing is falsified, right? Sometimes those houses aren't in those locations. They're not for sale. The people don't actually buy them, all kinds of crazy things. Don't watch those shows for anything more than entertainment. I do find them entertaining. Look at what houses probably look like in areas roughly like the places they're showing. It helps me understand the world a little bit more, but the prices they're showing, they're fake. That the houses are actually available and look like that, it's fake. That people actually chose the ones they did, it's fake. Don't get caught up in that stuff beyond just some basic entertainment. And it's fine to look at houses and say, I like how they decorated. Let's do something like that. I love this bay window. Why don't we have one of those? Great. Use the things that you can definitely uh, do, but don't get tied up with, oh, but they got a place for 400 a month. Why can't I? Right? You don't know that they did. That stuff, it just isn't real. Same thing when you're looking at the websites here remotely. Don't let the prices, the locations, all the information, just don't. don't. Don't bring it in. It's not stuff you want to internalize. Get here, look at real stuff, things you can verify, learn prices, learn building materials, learn styles, learn communities, do all that in person. The results will speak for themselves. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to help support the channel. And it really, really does help support the channel. The link above is buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Anything you do there comes directly to me, does so much to help make this channel possible. If you're looking for help with relocation, anything you just want to sit down, have a one-on-one -on -one consultation, you can shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. As always, post on social media, tell your friends, let people know about the show, hit a thumbs up on the other comments, get down below, say hi, leave comments. Anything you can do helps the show. Any interaction really does propel us forward, and I will see all of you tomorrow.